Can anyone hear me? Ah, I can hear you. Boom. All right. Hey, can, can you, you good? Me? Yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Jason Michael Carroll, can you hear me? What's going on, dude? Yes, What's sir. Up? All right. All right, man. Well, we're live. Everyone's connected. Uh, everyone's background looks a whole heck of a lot better than mine, which is sad <laughs> to me. Um, we're going to have to remedy that here sometime in the future. Uh, Jason Michael Carroll, man. Nice to meet you, man. I am JP. Nice to meet you, bro. I'm Nick. Nick. And we are live on the Bullhorn app, man. Let's let's uh, just jump right in here, man. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of DadCast. I am JP. He is Nick. And joining us is country music superstar, legend, veteran. But most importantly today, I think he's a dad. Jason Michael Carroll, how are you, man? What's going on, guys? How are you doing? We're good, man. We're, we're pretty stoked to have you on here live on the Bullhorn app. Um, uh, DadCast, if you weren't aware, uh, the premise of this show is we like to talk our path, our adventure, our journey. Uh, that is fatherhood and give advice to other dads out there and just talk about that adventure. But we do tend to go off the rails on these episodes and by tend to every single time, every well, single show. So, so good. good. <laughs> all right uh the rite of passage man the very first question we always like to ask uh just to make sure is are you a dad i am a dad yeah man i got four kids uh and uh while while we're doing this real quick what can my because we're are we live we're live right now right you're we're live, live man yeah so so what can my fans follow to how can they get here because i'm about to post it while we're doing this i'm gonna I'm multitask it right now all right so check it out man i'm going to send you a a link in the uh, chat here. Okay. Copy. This is so cool. This. All right. Co host chat. And boom. Did you get that? Let me see. Um, no, hold on. Hold on. Yep. Share. Yeah, but I, I can't do it that here, way. I'll, I'll text it to Kat and she can forward it to you real quick. Perfect. Perfect. That'll, that'll be great. Okay. That way I can post, post right my socials because I don't have my socials linked to my, my uh, laptop here. But yeah. Right. So, yeah, man. Right. I, I can even. Here, let me copy this link, and I'll send you an instant message via Facebook if we are able to do that, such that things. Also require, that would also require me being uh, good at Facebook. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Then we'll just leave it as it is. I should have a link for text messages right now, so just have her text you, and all right. you're good. Awesome. Yeah, because I'd like that. Here we go. Can you send me the link? Got it. They just sent. Got it. Yeah, so I've got four kids. They, uh, um, my oldest is twenty, about to be twenty-two. Um, and I tell you, it was kind of crazy, man. When he was born, I, you know, you're holding your baby boy, and you're sitting there thinking, like, he's gonna be a football player. He's gonna be rough, you know, rough and tough and big, big fella. And and then I remember when my daughter was born, a year, a little over a year later, um, I was holding her, and the, I mean, exact opposite emotions. You know, it was like it was like she's gonna be she's a princess. I'm going to take care of her. And, 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 and then all of a sudden I started thinking she's going to start dating guys like me. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, so <laughs> that yeah. Was, uh, yeah, that was, that was a definite um, turn about in my, th in my thought process. Was that the same for you? Uh, you had the boy first, then a girl, and then more kids later, a boy, uh, then a girl. And then uh, my other daughter story, as she's 18, uh, my, my, uh, let me back up. So my, I have a 22, about to be 22 year old son. I have a 20 year old that's about to be 21 daughter. Uh, and she's in Germany. She just left. Her husband is stationed in Germany. Um, oh, and so first time traveling around the world, guys, first time traveling by herself, period, but first time traveling around the world. And she wound up uh, moving to Germany. Her husband, a week before she got there, was deployed to Slovakia with everything going on. And oh, so she's right. been there by herself. She got stuck at JFK for 24 hours. Um, they they missed. They made her miss her flight. Um, she flew to Germany. Her bag, when she got to Germany, that they told her would be there waiting on her, was left in uh, in New York. So she had no clothes, and uh, all the stuff that she shipped to move there is not coming till the 30th of this month. And she found out Sunday that he actually is getting extended on his uh, TAD, temporary assigned duty. Um, to uh, to stay in Slovakia with everything going on right now. So she's going to be there even longer by herself. 
but she did just get her German license. She and she got, went and got the car that he carried to the airfield, <laughs> and uh, when he flew out. So uh, now he's uh, she she at least can, she's mobile in Germany. So yeah, that's good. Wow. Yeah. So I, I gotta back up, man. What did you have your first kid when you were like ten years old? <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. I had um. I've got, I've got a, uh, I'm, I was 21, I think, when my oldest son was born. I'm about, I'm about to be 44 in June. 44, okay. man, man yeah. gosh, we are no spring chickens. But hey, my, my oldest son is the reason I'm wearing this shirt. I don't know if you guys recognize this shirt or not, but any, any Demon Slayer fans out there? If there are, uh, it's pretty cool. So, um, Demon Slayer <laughs> is, uh, it's a uh, anime that my son got me into, and this character particularly is a Nosuke, and he's wearing a pig mask, and he's pretty sick. Yeah, he's an awesome samurai. So shout out to Demon Slayer right there. Boom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, being that you're, uh, you know, first kid here, so almost 22 years ago now, um, I for one can answer the question I'm about to ask you. I'm curious if you are still able to. Is it still fresh enough in your mind the emotions that went through when you were notified, however that may have been, that you were going to become a dad for the first time? Yes. Um... I, and, and I don't know, I don't know this, I don't think I could say the language that I used uh, at that time. Um, it, it was, it was, I, I was taught a specific four letter word uh, from my grandmother and it's, it begins with an S. Um, and in, in country, in country world, it, it has multiple syllables. <laughs> and so my grandmother would be like, you know, let's just say it was spit and that just so you guys know. And it Fair was, enough. It was speed, you know, and, and so I think I said that when when I found out that I, that um we were gonna have a baby, and because I I was still I mean I was about to be 21, um scared to death, had no clue what life was even about yet. I was already out, um I had already finished, uh, was almost done with the Marine Corps, and uh, and it was just I I just didn't know anything about life. I mean, who who do, who does at that age, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I had my first kid when I was 18, so yeah, I totally understand that. It was definitely scary. Um, cool story. Like I used to, I was the promoter that brought you into Southern Oregon, and you did all the Christmas shows at the Rocky Tonk. Yeah, yeah. Guy, my oldest son actually met you the last time you came in, and whatever you said to him, you changed his path, man. He, he joined the military. Yep. He's in the Are army now. No, I'm serious. Like he oh, was wow. going down a bad path of just getting into drugs and drinking and just being a, just a bad kid. And he ended up meeting you at this concert and he, and whatever you guys talked about when I walked away to go handle concert stuff, changed his path. He's like the next day, he's like, dad, I think I'm going to join the army. And he did it. So he's been in, yeah, he's been in for I think two and a half years now. He went in right as COVID hit and got stuck in Seoul for almost two years and finally got back stateside and he's in Texas now. Wow. Yeah, man, that's, that is awesome. I'm, I, 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 wow, that's that's yeah. crazy, man. I'm so proud of him. It's 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 amazing to see, you know, how just one little interaction can change somebody's life. And so, thank you. I think <laughs> if he took really, really 100 percent took it to heart, though, Nick, he would have joined the Marines, right? Hoorah. <laughs> <laughs> I might have actually said, I might have actually said, don't don't do the Marine Corps. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I love my Marine Corps, but yeah, it was, uh, um, uh, my, my son-in-law is in the army now. He's in, um, my, the one my daughter's married to, he's, uh, in, um, he's been stationed in Germany now for a, over a year and he'll be there for another three years. He's a striker systems mechanic. He works at HVAC on, in those vehicles so that our, 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 our men and women over there won't get, uh, too hot while they're in there, you know, putting warheads on foreheads, if you know what I mean. So, uh, so it was really cool that he's doing that. Um, and so my daughter's over there now, my oldest daughter. I have a 18 year old daughter now uh, named Story, and Story Page uh, is at ECU. Uh, she's just finishing up her first year of college, um, Eastern Carolina University, and uh, and then um, or East Carolina University at Eastern. Whew, I'm gonna get crucified when I go back. Um, and then uh, <laughs> and then um, my oldest, my youngest son, JW, is uh, 16. And he has my wife's brains, not mine. I, I bless his heart. He's he's a smart kid, um, and he's actually uh, finished with high, finishing high school officially, getting his last credit out of the way. And he's uh, in going to be enrolled in two colleges. He's already enrolled in one, uh, taking classes, advanced grammar for welding, 
and um, he's going to be playing soccer and uh, esports for Lewisburg College. So yeah, some really cool stuff. Going. Actually, I'm in my I'm in my podcast streaming room right now. That's why this is where we do my podcast. I've I've yet to get the podcast off the ground, which I love the fact that we can do this whole thing right here where you guys are doing the multiple um, like multiple ends from different locations because I, yeah. I, I figure that out. It's actually pretty simple, and I'm pretty certain the guys at bullhorn are going to really love me right about now but check out the bullhorn app it's all integrated um on my end because i'm running it um <clears throat> there's a, a call-in feature chat questions uh people can you know do it's it's all integrated and amazing nice and, streaming on <clears throat> facebook on youtube and on their yeah. app so it's, instantaneously it's really like right now we are live on youtube and facebook i think uh, it, I have, I'm not going to, I'm not going to leave and go chat. live on YouTube. I don't know about Facebook. Okay. Um, I, I got That's the pretty awesome. But yeah, the so. guys at Bullhorn, they've been uh, real cool to us and we're all about, you know, success for everyone and anyone. And, uh, yeah. Jason, Michael Carroll, what's the name yeah. of that podcast? Can can you divulge any of that information yet? Yeah. yeah so right now it's on Twitch and I've only been doing uh, anything on Twitch at the moment. I've been streaming on Twitch, gaming on Twitch with some veteran friends of mine. Right. Uh, I've been a gamer my whole life. My mom would scream at me every day that it was uh, there was no future in gaming when I was a kid, when I was really owning it. Mike Tyson's punch out. Oh, and, man, uh, me now, too. And now kids gaming are making more money than I am. So uh, <laughs> I'm like, look, mom. <laughs> so, Let's see if I can do it. 007-373-5964. Oh, wow. Is that, that, yeah, I think that might have been it. That's yeah. the code to go directly to Mike Tyson. <laughs> On the original Nintendo, I think it's going to be real, real close. Well, then, but then you got the thirty character code on Contra: up, up, down, down, left, yep, right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Like start. So I mean, <laughs> Contra code. Everyone knows that one. Is yeah. that friggin' Chewbacca next to you, Jason? It is. It is Chewbacca right beside me. Yep. Yep. And we part of the to, part of the gaming. Uh, this is. Let me just give you a, a quick, a quick once around here. This is the gaming center that we. Oh, I love that. <laughs> this was a Halloween costume years ago, and it was too awesome to put up in the in the attic. So we put it on a mannequin, and he's nice. been in our house since then. Almost got shot by the uh, Granville County Sheriff's deputies when we thought our house got broke into, and they were doing a, <laughs> they were doing a keep it clear, and they saw this shadow in, in in a dark room. They pulled, they drew on him, and didn't fire. Thank goodness, but yeah. Um, but this is my uh, podcast studio. That's my son's gaming station over there. This is my uh, my mixer from my live um, acoustic stuff that I do here. Yeah, my, yeah. my monitor to be able to keep up with the fans. The three camera input, and then that's my gaming station over there. And then there's the brains. That's the tower there. Bam! Yeah. You got it set up, man. So, well, hey, man, you know, if there's any anything when it comes down the line to uh, that we could do to help you out with your podcast, if we're even in that boat. Uh, where you even need me help, man, you know, you hit us up and we're more than happy to you know, do what we can do because when it comes to podcasts, uh, apparently we know what we're doing, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Strange, pretty yeah. fun. <laughs> I so really, uh, I, I did a little, uh, you know, before we do a podcast, I, I try to go down the rabbit hole of any of the guests that uh, we do have on. So I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole with you and ended up on your socials and uh, came across you asking radio stations to you know shout out call them up play your songs etc cetera, etc cetera. and i loved that because i am a radio guy through and through i actually own my own radio station now and prior to that i worked here in southern oregon in terrestrial radio for close to 20 years um so i love seeing that because everyone says it's dead and i wouldn't say it's dead completely but it, it's not it's not as alive as it used to be. That heart is not pumping like it used to be. And that is what it takes and what it needs, especially for a local radio um, station. You know, you yeah, need to call is. in, get it all community. And, uh, and, you know, that's, I mean, that's how guys broke it in the day. Well, that was, you know, radio used to be the, the only medium to getting new music. And now you got so many streaming services out there from Spotify to Amazon, to iTunes, to Apple music and all that stuff. So, a lot of people are are trying to move away to to from radio itself, but honestly, it's it's still one of the best forms of of media to to get the information, especially in your local area. You know, yep. uh, you've got a lot of big conglomerates that are taking over, and they're trying to uh, do a lot of syndication uh, at different places. But sometimes that isn't necessarily the best because you're losing that local audience, that local feel that mm -hmm. you 
get from, you know, the, the morning showgram or, or, or morning show in your local market. Um, versus listening to somebody that's like in, a, in four or five states away. So, I mean, it's, it's, an interesting, um, it's an interesting thing to watch it build the way it has been, you know? So, yeah, it's, but believe me, man, I have lived it uh, in, in a couple of different buildings and uh, radio stations and whatnot. And it went that path where, you know, they're, they're hiring voice actors to do your shows and they just come in, record their shows from another state. You know, that was Jason Michael Carroll. This is blah, 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 whatever it may be. And it's just not, it's not engaging, man, you know, and thankfully with both of the radio stations that I worked with, the businesses, they, they realized this and they shifted just a little bit and went back to that emphasis on local with, you know, the ability to still stream worldwide with today's technology. And, you know, those buildings, they're, they're doing okay still. And yeah. uh, I just hope that they don't lean away from that at all because it's at what's what's it's what's needed. And anyway, that's <clears throat> part of my deep dive. Then I saw that I'm like, that is pretty friggin' cool, man. And I hope thinking, I hope it's been working. The, dude, the new single is really good, and it would fit on Pirate Radio. So, oh, well. oh okay. Uh, well, you know, same. with with <laughs> Mr. Jason Michael Carroll's permission, um, <laughs> consider whatever songs you would like me to put in rotation on Pirate Radio to be literally in rotation in about two hours. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. There's a, we had a station in Salina, Kansas, um, the Eagle in Salina and there, and, and Shane McClintock has been a huge fan of mine for years. Um, and, and to give you another, another incident or, or an instance where it, you know, songs can literally take you to the next place. And, and honestly, it's not all, always about a label. Sometimes you have the situation like we did in 2013 when we had a station out in Sacramento, California, my buddy that was a, a music director there called me up and said, Hey, I just released an independent record. I had no, I didn't know what to do as far as releasing a single off of it, how to, how to put it out. He called me up himself said, Hey man, I love this song. Can we play it? I said, yeah, absolutely. So in 2013, when uh, I don't know if y'all remember 2013 very well, but that was the year that Cruz just blew the doors off of everything and mm -hmm. was the number one song across the globe. And, yep. um, it, except in Sacramento, California, we had the number one song in Sacramento, California that year, uh, with a song called let me, um, that they played uh, and, and spun for us there. Last year, uh, Salina, Kansas, I had a number one song in Salina uh, from a soundtrack for a, mo a movie I was in that's streaming on Amazon Prime right now called Strings. I wrote the soundtrack for that movie. And uh, one of the songs that I wrote, a buddy there of mine said, hey, can we play this song? I love it. And, and it was a song called Why. And that song was the number one song for us in Salina last year. So, I mean, it, it's really cool to see that sometimes the song still wins. You know, it's not about... How, how big a label is behind you or how big an artist is because you know even when i came along with, with Alyssa lies a payola was a thing anybody that doesn't know what that means uh, <laughs> record labels used to walk in with like wads of cash and envelopes and hand it to a, a radio station and say here play the song and that's why you heard the songs you heard uh growing up on the radio that came to a head when elliot spitzer uh was a a congress a senator who was uh, saying that that's morally wrong. Meanwhile, he was having an affair with a uh, prostitute in D.C., and that came out right after that. <laughs> so he ended payola and then got busted with a prostitute. Um, but they said, uh, so it was kind of crazy that it, it, that was morally wrong, but he was he was doing other things. Anyway, that ended then, but now it's still kind of, it's not really payola now, but what happens is you have larger labels that say, hey, I'll give you tickets to X if you play this new artist. So it's kind of still the same thing. So since we're independent, that we don't have that. And it's really cool to see sometimes the songs take off on their own. So it really shows me that the, the, the songs still have power. Yeah, absolutely. Like it, yeah, jumping in on that, like we have, we manage artists on the side too. So like we manage Jesse Lawson, who's in Sleeping with Sirens, um, a pop punk band out of Vegas called Sprockets. And same thing, you've got to get that fan base in every local community to call into the radio stations and play the singles. And it's crazy because you can't just go to XM and be like, hey, I've got something great for you. It's mm -hmm. you, you've got to have a label behind you or you have to have a million views on TikTok to be a kid. We've video. tried. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but you know, those things work. I mean, look at uh, Priscilla Block. I mean, she yeah. was a TikTok star. She's from my yeah. hometown. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, we, I, I've known Priscilla for years. Uh, I ran into her in Nashville not long ago and she was like, uh, Hey, I got something to show you. Um, let me find this picture. Cause while we're sitting there talking, she, she said, um, do you remember me? I was like, yeah, I remember you. She goes, do you remember when you first met me? I was like, help me out. And she sent me this picture, which was pretty awesome. 
uh, back in 20, 2012. And check this out. This is at a charity event I did for, uh, for a, uh, a children's hospital. And that's Crazy. Priscilla in 2012. <laughs> you know, and now, yeah, she, she used TikTok to her advantage and, and really yeah. capitalized on it. You've got other artists, uh, uh, Dylan Carmichael. Uh, yeah. used TikTok and do some of his songs up, Sawing Logs and, you know, uh, dude, uh, uh, dude, I mean, so many awesome, awesome songs that people are starting to use social media the proper way uh, yeah. to get the stuff out there. It's pretty cool. That's, that's what we're doing with some of our artists, too. It's like, let's focus on that. But let's still, like, Jesse Lawson, he's from Reading, and we get a lot of radio play in Sacramento, Reading area. I'm supposed to be writing with him soon, aren't I? I think we're trying yeah. to set something up. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think he reached out to Kat, and you guys, I think she's working on something with you guys. But, yeah, he, he wants to break into country. Me. I'm not sure. I, thought, I I hope I responded to him. I am the world's worst with this stuff. That's why I have a Wrangler, uh, because I, <laughs> I am the world's worst with my I, – I honestly, I'm, I'm seeing a doctor probably in, I think, next week um, to get back on um, – uh, some, I have ADD. I think it's hard for me to stay focused lately, even, even writing songs. I'll get in the middle of a songwriting session and I'll be hammering away at this one idea. And while I'm hammering that one out, I'll get another idea and I'll chase right. that rap. Squirrel. Yeah. Yeah, dude, <laughs> so bad. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll text Jesse and have him text Cat or you or whatever and reach back okay. out. But yeah, yeah, he's writing for a really big rock band right now. I can't say it on live because it's not announced yet, but He's right. Yeah, he's he's writing he to fly me out there and do some writing. I'm, I'm always down yeah. to do that. So. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we, we'll put you in. That we ask you in. It's right on the Rogue River, and like he'll set up a studio in one of the rooms, and it's it's really Perfect. really cool. Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah, let's do it. Another awesome. trip. Do we ask you? I am in, and thank you for yes. we ask you in. And <clears throat> I also want to let everyone know who's listening right now. Um, if you are watching this back, not live, uh, whether it's on YouTube or on the Bullhorn app, whatever the case. Uh, We've probably already announced everything we're going to announce, but for everyone listening right now, I have a teaser, um, some information that I'm going to drop here in just a few minutes that is really, really cool. So uh, don't go anywhere. Stay here. Keep listening. Keep nice. watching right here live on the Bullhorn app. We'd appreciate it. Jason Michael Carroll. So a questions. I'm going to bring it back to the kids. Um when they were growing up, I mean, we're talking the formidable years, zero to, you know, seven, eight years old. Um, what was life like for you then? Were you touring? Were you putting out a lot of music? Were you, uh, were you able to be at home with them during that time? Um, just, just to be honest, it was a, uh, it was a little difficult um, with, with the career taking off the way it was. Uh, I had moved to Texas uh, in 2001 and my ex-wife and I, we moved down there together and my, we had two kids at the time. Um, and then she hated Texas. Um, I just hated it. And so um, wound up, she moved back to North Carolina and left me in Texas. So I went through a phase there where it was pretty dark. Um, I, I, my dad owned a bar there and um, it was, uh, it, he, he was a preacher while I was growing up. Then he, he got in the honky tonk business when I, when I, when I started singing in the honky tonks. And then he bought a bar in uh, outside of Houston, uh, near Arcola, Texas. And we lived down there because I'm from Houston originally. So we traced our roots back there. And the band was starting to take off in like a two-year time. We were already playing the Houston Chili Cook-Off. We were a really big local band at the time. I mean, in a, in a short amount of time. And um, I had two full-time jobs. I had a, a, a full-time band. It was just, it was just crazy. Um, and so when she decided to uh, move back to North Carolina, it was going to be without me. And, um, I was there for about six months after she left. And I remember I, I, um, would go to my dad's bar and sit there and I'd count the count registers in, in the morning. And, um, I would, uh, uh, after everybody was counted in, I got really, I'd, I'd, I'd grab a drink at 11 o'clock in the morning when we opened. And then I'd sit there to those touch screen machines and I'd got really good at 11 ball. Like if you know what it is, it's where you add to 11. I don't know why I got better at that, the, the more alcohol I had. But anyway, I, and then it got to the point where I would wake up in my bed um, after six months of living there. I'd wake up in my bed and my keys were on the counter. My car was in the driveway. I don't remember getting there. Mm -hmm. And my staff was literally loading me up in the car, taking me home and following the other person. And then they would put me in, in my bed and then they'd leave and lock my door. And I realized then if I stayed there, um, away from my kids, uh, I was probably not going to be around much longer. 
So I moved back to North Carolina. I packed up and moved back to North Carolina, um, not with hopes of trying to fix the relationship with my ex because that was unserviceable. Um, but then I wound up moving back to North Carolina and uh, my um, got reconnected with my high school sweetheart, um, uh, Wendy. Uh, Wendy and I, we dated in high school um, and we reconnected, started talking, uh, started dating. She wound up telling me she got pregnant with our, our, our youngest son. And I remember I was like, I said the same word <laughs> that I told y'all earlier. And I remember uh, it, it was one of those things where I had an apartment in Nashville, but we decided I was going to live here because I couldn't be that far away from my babies again. So even though my ex kind of made it difficult for me to see them um, um, several times, I, uh, I, I decided that um, being close to my kids and, and fighting the way, to, fighting to see them was worth not seeing them at all, you know, wor worth it over not seeing them at all. And um, so wound up at finishing, um, when I left Arista, um, I had been offered three different gigs hosting because I was really good at doing interviews on, on TV, on camera uh, with GAC. GAC offered me my own show twice uh, where I'd be hosting my own show. CMT offered me my own show as well once. And I got passed up each time that they decided they were looking for a new host because I didn't live in Nashville. And um, I told them, Hey, I said, it's an hour and a half Southwest flight or, or, or a nine hour motorcycle ride. I'll be there. But they, they needed somebody that wanted that lived in town. So, so I, I've been passed up for a few things because of my decisions. Um, but you know, my fans have kept me out there and I mean, would I be further in my career? Probably, but it's, it was, uh, it was something I decided to do so I could, you know, have those those moments and memories with my kids that I don't think I would have had because um, my ex-wife I even offered to buy her a house in Nashville so that I could move her there and have my kids there and she didn't want to do it so it was, it was yeah it was it was quite the uh, conundrum but you know everything works out the way it's supposed to nothing happens on accident and uh, yeah so everything is here now that's amazing what's one piece of advice Jason Michael Carroll would give to a new dad new dad man um you know make the most out of the time you have with your kids because uh, my kids are all almost grown now i mean wendy and i aren't quite empty nesters yet but you know we're we're almost there you know our, our youngest son is is here but he's already in two colleges i mean what's going to happen you know if if he's he's really got his, uh, his sights set on playing soccer and so if that happens, then uh, what's what's going to happen when he's uh, asked to go play more than likely on a UK team or something like that, you know? So, um, so we'll see, you know, what, what's going to happen with that. Um, uh, but you we're almost be, there. You could be like Nick here and uh, start over in <laughs> your early forties. Uh, <laughs> did you do yeah, that? Nick? I, I did. Yeah. So I was almost done. Like my youngest at the time was, Oh, 13, 14. So yeah. I have a one and a half year old now and oof, man, <laughs> it's a, uh, my wife and I are actually, we're going through IVF again. So we'll have hopefully another one in okay. about 10 months. So oh wow, we'll see. Uh, well, congrats, man. Yeah. We, thanks. we had a scare uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, like a couple, a couple months ago, Wendy and I did, she thought that she was, and we both sat down and, and literally just stared at each other across the kitchen table. Like, we thought we were done, you know. <laughs> yeah, would you I be? Uh, I open? change. It's it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, you're getting to the point where, and 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 I'm gonna knock on wood for you right up front, but you're getting to the point where Jason Michael Carroll might become a granddad. Isn't that crazy? I can't even imagine. And I'm and not, dude, what's crazy I... is my oldest daughter is 17, will be 18 this year. It's not that far off if you think about timing and whatnot, you know, preferably it's another 10, 15 years from now, but well, I, as, as active as kids are today too, as far as, you know, finding out about sex and stuff like that earlier in life and, and, and I mean, earlier than we did in school, you know, and then, and then, you know, just the type of friends that they hang out with. And we thought we did a really good job keeping our, our helping our kids choose the right friends, you know, Right. But uh, but when <laughs> a little running joke with my wife and I was after all of our kids graduated high school, we high fived and said, "No grandbabies before they graduated." <laughs> so, we <were> good. <laughs> so we win. Uh, <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, it's Nick. Are you sure? 
You should sure? actually, I should say, I'm gonna look, I'm looking at you, Danielle. You watch back on this. Are you sure about this? <laughs> Are you sure? Danielle is yeah. Nick's wife. We're sure, hundred <laughs> percent. Okay, all right. I don't want to throw you under the bus or get anyone in trouble. I just, I mean, I see all the work it takes with little Liam, and you want to add to the mix, and you know, I got well, you back. I'm hoping Nick. we have a little girl, and she's like a little princess, and she loves me because my 17 year old daughter hates me. But so, that 17 so. year old used to be your little princess. Too. She used to be. Up until two years ago. Hey, hey Nick, I'm telling you, it, my daughters were very close to the same thing, and, and they come back around. They do, but it was yeah. uh, it was a tough, tough go there for several years, and and uh, it takes me back. My my wife loves the show Big Bang Theory, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a, there's an episode where Howard's uh, been rubbing this lotion on his mom, uh, you know, and and it was it had it was very high in estrogen. <laughs> and and she started like being very sensitive about everything and upset about everything. And she's like, this thing's loaded with estrogen. Why are you doing this? Why? No wonder you're acting crazy. He goes, well, you have estrogen. You're not crazy. She says, I've had years riding the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did you navigate those difficult years when the daughters were, uh, you know, doing what they do? Everyone's everyone's every dad's different story, but you know, at the root of it all, it's basically, uh, I'm I'm guessing a wanting of more independence and. Yeah, I think that's what acting out is as, as a whole with with a teenager. I mean, if you remember when you, when you were one, I'm thinking, I think that's really you're finding yourself. You you think that you're grown and and you really you know you want to express yourself in ways that that you didn't before because you're you know you're immortal. You know that yeah. that age, you know there's you you don't you're not worried about consequence you know and 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 you've got life by the balls and and you know that's 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 not really what it's about you know when when you get older you know and I think that you have you have to go everybody goes through that phase I believe um, no matter if you were the straight A student or if you know you were the the guy like me <laughs> that that uh, was a little bit more uh, 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 had a little more excitement in life my dad asked my brother one time he said he said I, my dad and I had gotten in a fight and I left. Um, my dad looked at my brother and goes, John, why weren't you as much trouble as Jason was growing up? And my brother is two years younger than me, born on the same day. Talk about, I mean, we were grew up in close proximity and you two exact opposites. And, uh, and my brother looked at my dad and gave him the best answer ever. He said, dad, I saw the stuff that Jason did for what he called fun. And it just didn't seem worth it <laughs> when I got in trouble for it, you know? Right. So, yeah. So maybe I, maybe I had a hand in teaching my little brother. See, there you go. Yeah. yeah. See, <laughs> crazy circle. Circle's All right. Life, so, dude. Who ask, who oh, ask advice? Yeah. So my daughter, like we have, we're having an issue. So she uh, came home right at curfew a week and a half ago. And she's like, I'm going to my mom's. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you have a 10 o'clock curfew, either my house or her house. I don't care where you go, but don't come home five minutes to curfew and tell me you're going to drive across town to be late past your curfew to your mom's. Right. So she got pissed off and left mm-hmm. without having a conversation. I'm like, wait a minute. What the hell? So she comes back two days later. And I'm like, okay, so here's the deal. Since she just walked out, you're going to have a nine o'clock curfew for two weeks. And you can go to your mom's on Friday and Saturday. Mm-hmm. And she's like, nope, you're being terrible and you're we're a terrible dad and just and got up and left again so i took her car parked it weird in the driveway so she can't leave and she's like lived with her mom ever since then so and she's and uh, you know i'm getting the you're the worst dad you're over you're overprotective you're overbearing you don't let me do anything and so what should i do <laughs> uh, bro i you know it's it, this is going to be the most cliche answer anybody's ever given you, but uh, just just keep loving them, you know, because it's it's tough and you want to stand your ground and you want to like in my upbringing, uh, I would have been knocked on the floor. You know, I mean, me too. <laughs> my, parents, my parents would have, I mean, beat the ever loving dog crap out of me. And, and mm-hmm. you know, that was, you know, part of the way I was raised. Uh, my dad and I fist fought from the time I was 13 till I was 21. My dad quit drinking um, and quit smoking when he uh we found Jesus when he was, uh, when I was seven. And um, uh, the only thing he couldn't quit was his temper with my mom. So wound up, um, he, um, at seven years old, my job in the family was to take my brother and sister and sit down on the living room couch with them. 
and hold their hands while my mom would steer the fight away from wherever we were to the kitchen. And I remember uh, when I was 13, I got up off the couch and I said, "He, I can't do this anymore. I can't sit here. And my brother grabbed my wrist and he's like, please don't, Jason. I said, I have to. And I was just big around. Um, and I remember I, I went into the kitchen and he had her up off the floor against the fridge. And I, I said, you won't put her down. You won't touch her again. And he said, what'd you say? And I remember look, watching my mom's feet hit the floor. And I remember he came at me and he picked me up. We lived in an old 1903 farmhouse. Uh, my bed was the dining old dining room, which was right beside the kitchen. And I um, uh, had four by four posts um, with a two by six frame and two by fours um, or one by sixes holding on a piece of plywood, which was my box springs and a mattress on top of that. And my dad rushed me, grabbed me, picked me up and then slammed me through my bed. We both went through my bed and broke the bed and it hurt like hell, but I was a huge WWE fan. So it was kind of cool too. <laughs> so, um, but uh, so I, you know, it was, it was one of those things, man, where I, I just, I was, I had to, I had to take care of my mom. And so growing up that way, it would have been a different outcome for me. And I had to, I had to keep that in mind with my, with my kids whenever they would cross the line or push it because I didn't, I would make Wendy like we still believe in spanking and, and, and things like that, because I believe that that's what keeps kids out of, out of jail. Um, and you know, people are like, well, you're just instilling fear. Well, fear is a pretty powerful tool. Yep. Um, yep. You, you, have I, a fear, you have a fear of getting a ticket. That's why you don't, uh, you don't go, you don't speed down the highway. You have a fear. I mean, to think about it. I mean, I mean for the most part, <laughs> but, I own a Tesla. So yeah, there's no fear when it comes to that speed, but yeah, you know, I know exactly what you mean, man. And, so, and I agree. Yeah. So uh, my kids, I, I, I had to kind of figure out how to do that. But since I believed in that still, but I was afraid that I would carry it to the next level like my dad used to do to me. I actually, uh, my threat to my kids was always, don't make me go get Wendy. Because <laughs> Wendy was the disciplinarian at our house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's your favorite WWE wrestler? Rock, you know, wrestler of all time. And, and damn it, yesterday sucked, did it not? If you follow uh, the news. I did. I, I heard about that yesterday, man. That's horrible. Razor Ramon. Hey, yo. Odd Hall. He'd let yeah. Andre the Giant. Look at you. Yeah, awesome. Um, man, I was a huge um, – I grew up um, watching Saturday morning WWE. Remember WWE? Yes. Yep. And, um, and I, I I was a huge Sting fan because WCW was on right before then. Remember, they always – they stacked. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so I watched Sting. Sting was one of my favorite people. I've never met him, but I actually have met people that know him, so I'm kind of – in the same circles with him, but we've seven uh, degrees of Kevin Bacon. You know Sting, yes. Yes, I know Sting, and uh, wound up sitting at ringside at the TNA uh, pay per view when we played down at the House of Blues in Orlando, Florida, because TNA's uh, soundstage is behind uh, the same parking lot almost. Mm -hmm. uh, so we actually got to go to a pay per view, uh, a TNA Genesis one year. I sat ringside beside Brooke and Nick Hogan. Um, and got to meet Kurt Angle afterwards and also, I mean, some really Ric Flair was there and I met Rick before, um, you know, so, I mean, it was, it was awesome, but I was a huge, um, ultimate warrior fan Dude, and, me uh, too. yeah, Gosh. and I love, I love Steve Austin. And, uh, so yeah, it's, it was, it's been really cool to be able to, uh, to watch and, and I didn't watch it for about 10 years, to be honest. I got out of it for a minute and was raising the kids and was touring and stuff. And I remember it came home one Monday and my wife was like, it was kind of late. And I said, I said, Hey guys, come check this out. And I turned it on just randomly. Thinks I saw that Raw was on. Like, hey, flick it, flick it on. And I hadn't watched it in ten years, but the storylines were almost identical, oh, even yeah. though it was new characters. And yeah. so I felt right back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is, I was actually crow sting for Halloween in ninety nine, ninety eight, right at the height of the uh, you know NWO and all that. Dude, and, I did uh, crow sting for Halloween on stage. I actually did my makeup backstage. Yeah. You know, the, 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 uh, with the crow outfit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, nice. And that theme, I'm still, that that theme song is still one of my favorites ever. <laughs> I, I just, ah. Uh, yeah. Who's afraid of the big black bat? Or, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. Sorry, I'm getting nerdy on us here. Yeah, this but, is not you, the nerd uh, cast. This <laughs> is dad cast. I got to go to the uh, WCW. Now this is a this is a bittersweet uh, moment, but I got to go to the WCW um, uh, event at the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill uh, when Eddie Guerrero fought Chris Benoit. Oh wow! And that was an amazing. Uh, those two. That, whoa! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> those, I'm working the rest of the episode. 
those two put on one of the best shows I've ever seen. They were some of the best, like they worked well together, you know, and it was awesome. I, unfortunate with what happened with Chris later on in life. And of course, yeah. Mm-hmm. Past now. But yeah. yeah. So man, Jason, Michael Carroll, I, I, I think we're best friends now. I, and just I I mean, I like Chewbacca in his room. He's a wrestling fan. The man can sing. So obviously he loves him some music. Um, ah, I, I, I have to interrupt. And by, and by interrupt, I mean shift gears shortly because I am going to make that teaser announcement right now. Are you all ready for this? Everyone yeah. listening worldwide now and in the future, check this out. As you know, it's no secret how we support our military service members and U.S. veteran communities. Very important to us. And, and by the way, Jason Michael Carroll is a veteran, as we mentioned earlier in the podcast. He's a Marine. Here, let me hear that hoorah. Hoorah. There it is. All right. So today, right here, live on Bullhorn with U.S. veteran Jason Michael Carroll, we have a teaser exclusive just for you. Okay. How's the fastest growing podcast? That's us, Dadcast, uh, on social media, giving back by growing our exclusive U.S. veterans charities mission even faster. We have partnered up with Save Home Front, and uh, we have a bunch of big stuff we're announcing in the very, very near future. But as of right now, that's, that's all I can really dish out. We have partnered up with Save Home Front, and we ask you, all of our listeners, to check them out and uh, follow them back as well. Save at Save Home Front, S-A-V-E-H-O-M-E-F-R-O-N-T. And uh, the Save Home Front mission overview, real quick, uh, it's to provide society an authentic depiction of the U.S. veteran to preserve their history, create business opportunities, and improve their image through arts and entertainment. Now, this may be a big ask, but I don't think so. Jason Michael Carroll, we'd like you to be the first to invite to join us in this amazing mission by simply following a man. Can you do that? Go to facebook.com, savehomefront.org, click that like button when we're done. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Awesome. We appreciate that. And of course, sharing it with your fan base, it absolutely would mean the world to us and Save Home Front as well. Um, you'll be able to find everything you need to know by following the link that we're going to post later today on our Facebook page. Um, Check it out after the live broadcast with Bullhorn and uh, follow along because in the coming weeks, oh, man. Yeah, we, you're not going to want to miss. You're not going to want to miss this, you guys, listening. So there you go. There's our big teaser announcement that Congrats. we are going to do and we're saving live right here on Bullhorn, man. That's awesome. Uh, and we're glad that you could uh, play a part in that, Mr. Jason oh, Michael Carroll. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo, Nick. Woo. Yeah, isn't that belt? Yeah, live. <laughs> well, dude, I don't even. This is my this is my fake one that looks real on camera. Where's the real one? You want me to go grab it? Do you want yeah, to see it, Jason? Yeah, you, yeah, oh, dude. Oh, okay. All right, right. then Nick. The real gotta, one's, yeah, the real one's you gotta, badass. You got to hold the fort down for a second there. All right, well, I'm gonna start the fast five while you're grabbing that. Oh, but I want to hear the answers to these questions. Okay. No, no, you're not gonna start. Th- this is live and it's a podcast. I, I don't know. Favorite right. comic book movies? Go. Be right back. Yeah. <laughs> favorite comic book what the <laughs> deadpool so good yeah 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 that's that's the only one that i like no well, and, and the wolverine that was i just good. saw dude have you seen do you know anything about um shang chi and the, and the ten rings i don't dude i so i didn't know anything about it and i, I came out on dvd I'm, I'm a i'm a movie nerd so every every tuesday i'm still physically buying dvds at the store my and wife gets so mad at me for that. <laughs> so I buy DVDs, and they have to have digital copies so that I can stream them when I'm, I'm traveling and stuff yes. like that. And so Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings is one of the best movies I've seen. Oh, my God. It totally is. I had no clue anything about that movie, and it was so, so good. good. Right? Yeah. Oh, man. I dig yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready? Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's the spinner. What? It's the spinner, and it's like friggin' fifteen pounds. It's no. all metal. I mean, so that... a little backstory. You'll have to go back and watch the YouTube video. JP took his son to SummerSlam for his son's birthday. Yes, awesome. which was in Allegiant Stadium in Vegas this past summer. And uh, I told my son, you know, we're there. If if Daddy hits good on the slots, I will buy you your choice of authentic real championship belts when we're at the event i won so uh 
this is this is the one he picked. It's uh, you know Cena and Edge's little spinny champ belt, and it's yeah. awesome, and it's heavy, and it's amazing, and wow, and it's I think I'm more excited about it than than. And there's like a split second where I wanted like like JP to be my dad, and then I had a whole bunch of mom jokes just dumped <laughs> into my head, and I was like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, there's, there's, this is now the second or third time this thing's made an appearance on the podcast. A second time. Yeah. I think I made you wear it during one whole episode. You did. You did. (laughs) And it actually fits around my waist. Yeah. (laughs) Because I'm not exactly a thin guy, Jason. So, uh, ironically, amazing. When I got my son, my youngest son, into, uh, into wrestling, um, again, after a 10 year hiatus and then got back into it. Oh, he's going to double belt this thing? And look at him. Oh, look at him. JP, oh. two belts. Now you're just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you're just showing off. Um, All right. But we have – I wish we had taken a video of it. There's probably some – that he we, he would take a shower in our bathroom when he was little, and and he would go talk, trash talk, in the mirror of our bathroom. <laughs> nice. like, like wrestling, like wrestling yeah. trash talk. He's like, you talking to me? You talking to me? And, it, and it, we would hear him singing – you think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. I'm <laughs> Little HPK. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> but then one time we, we heard him talking through the door and I opened the door and there he is. Dude, little, little bitty. I'm like maybe five, maybe four or five. And he's standing naked in front of, in front of the mirror. And he's going, I got chicken legs. You got chicken legs. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if TikTok existed yeah. back then, but you know, oh, with, oh, with like you know, you cover things. Man, that yeah. probably would have been a million viewed video right there. Oh, dude, we, oh, <laughs> it was amazing. It, are you on TikTok? I just okay. I officially took over my TikTok account. My daughter has been telling me to do TikTok for a while, and again, all yep. those artists we were talking about launching their songs through mm-hmm. TikTok and making them hits. Um, I'm like, okay, let's give it a chance. Now, when TikTok, and I, I'm very political, guys, but I'm not going to do it on here. Uh, when TikTok was owned by the Chinese government and they were stealing all the information, which was a real thing, you can Google it and, and do read the stories on it. I, yep. I actually, uh, I have friends of mine that were in the um, government uh, services and they weren't allowed to have TikTok on their phone because of that. So it was, it was a real thing. Um, and then uh, supposedly America bought TikTok now, so it's safe. Um, but I w- didn't have it. My daughter is like, Dad, you need a TikTok. So she started one for me. She's been running it. I have over 20,000 followers, and I just posted my first TikTok video last week. Atta boy. <laughs> oh, it helps me and Jason Michael Carroll, you know. I don't know. I mean, you Walker Hayes, man. He does all those awesome dances with his kids, and yeah. the guy just, like, blew up like crazy. Right? <laughs> good. Man. Well, good. It's like my son, he's uh, 11. He'll be 12 in August. Um, he he's been doing TikTok for gosh a year and a half two years the first year i had no knowledge of said things which don't knock me that doesn't make me a bad dad i just trust him and don't think that you know he's making videos and wants to be he's he's all about video gaming on it so i'm like you know he's not seeing the bad stuff anyway long story short he got himself up to like over three thousand followers and and this is like the 10 years old making videos that believe me weren't that good but (laughs) <laughs> you know, whatever. He was proud of it. I was proud of him for doing so. And he finally got the ability to go live. And he was doing live streams, uh, playing Fortnite and all these other yeah. video games. And and then he last week, I get a text message from him when he's on the bus. Dad, Dad, I got banned from TikTok. <laughs> and I'm like, what oh, did what you, you do? <laughs> How? What is going on? He's like, so I looked it up. He didn't do anything wrong. You gotta be 13 years old to have a TikTok account, and he made one oh. un- underage, and boom, they wiped him. And now he started over fresh. Wow! And I, and I said, you make sure that birth date says you're 13 years old, kid. Yeah. <laughs> if TikTok somehow sees this, please don't ban him. Please, he really, he's really good at it and wants to be successful. But yeah. now he's all pissed off because he's got to, you know, regain all those followers <laughs> he had. Oh but, no. Yeah, I know. Can you imagine if just out of nowhere, our TikTok account just got wiped, Nick? I know. So, so my oh. daughter uh, did TikTok, and she posted the first, I think one of the first videos, she not first video, but one of the first ones that really took off for her, um, she posted a video that said, me forgetting my dad's famous. Right. And, and then she posted like 
pictures of me on the red carpet CMAs or pictures of me uh, uh, presenting an award at the CMAs or me uh, with, you know, George Strait or something like that and me performing. And, you know, and, and she's in front of it with a green screen all behind her, like doing like this, like, you know, and that thing got over, I think overnight, it was almost a million views. Yeah. And oh, wow. so, and so that's why she's like, dad, you need a TikTok. So then she's like insistent that I got it. And there's one that uh, we did, one of the ones on my page that she actually did was um, uh, this one here where she said, uh, where's my profile? There it is right here. And she pinned it actually. So she um, wanted this one because she, when she, my daughter was homecoming queen this past year at high school. Um, so she was pretty excited about this one. Let's see if I can go come up. Is it going to play? I don't know if it's going to play or not. And as we stood to claim the bags we shook, you said, I'll pray for your brother. And did I mention that Italian suits haven't always been my style? See, I was the quarterback of my high school team. We took state back in 63 and my daughter. She sealed the homecoming queen. <laughs> So she got homecoming queen that night and wanted to uh, do that video, wanted me to sing that song uh, for her TikTok. So that was pretty cool. Well, I literally just did an Inception TikTok. I did a TikTok of you showing us the TikTok on TikTok, and I'm going to post it to TikTok, and we're going to see what happens. It's like fourth wall break, man. Yeah, I know. One of my favorite movies. I love Inception. (laughs) Oh, it's hard to follow, especially when you get a little deep there, but. All yeah. right, Nick, man, we are getting, yeah. believe it or not, dangerously close to the end of our time together. Oh, so before crazy. that happens, uh, Nick, you, did you put together a Fast Five today? For of course Jason I did. All right. So, Jason, uh, the Fast Five, quick little segment we like to do. Nick's going to ask you five questions, and uh, they're nothing crazy, nothing controversial. And, uh, well, maybe maybe Nick decided to change it up today. Who knows? But typically they're not. I'm okay. <laughs> now, do I have to answer quick? No, see, I, why, why the hell? I think I'm going to change it to just Furious 5, but then then there's angry. So you ever, just, notice, you ever notice people do that sometimes? So, so they ask me like five questions in a row, like shotgun them, and then I'm supposed to respond quickly, but then some of them are just too good, and I want to sit on it for a minute and explain why. Yes. I no, so when you're out, when you come out here, though, we're going to do another one of these, and we're going to get a bunch of hot wings and do it over hot wings and beer. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's good to me. All right, yep. All right, let's do this, Nick. All right. If you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be and why? That's his go-to. Oh, my goodness. A billboard? There's a good reason for that, though. Yeah. Um, gosh, wow. Uh, it, it, right now, I'd have to say it would, it would say, hey, please play, t- listen, stream, tell me your name. Because I really think that that song needs to get out there. I think the message of that song needs to be heard. So many people have told me. Uh, through hearing it, how much the song means to them, and 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 I think it's one of those songs, just like Alyssa Lies, where um, it's gonna it, it'll open up some doors for people to talk about something and to show that they're not alone in what they're dealing with. Like right now, with my wife's all my wife's mom's Alzheimer's, um, we, it's it's a rough battle. Um, she had a, a rough day at church Sunday, um, and uh, uh, it's 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 just gotten bad. Otherwise, I think I'd buy a billboard and say, "Be nice." All right. So we asked that question because I bought a billboard the first week we started DadCast, and I put on the billboard on the busiest street in Medford, Oregon, gets like 100,000 cars a day or something, that said DadCast, the, what was like the, the best the number podcast. one parenting podcast in the world. <laughs> wow. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Right? He yeah. was confident, but I, I went Very and checked that thing out and went, uh, bro, uh, you Is know, we're not by any means. Hey, two that? years later, we're in the top 1.5% in the, in the yeah, country. So, yeah. yeah, so so it, it, it was a little foreshadowing, I suppose. But yeah, yeah it, 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 that was pretty funny. You know, is it was a digital billboard or is it, is it the, the, the roller? like the, the, No, the, it was a digital one. So it okay. popped up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not like the eat more chicken, like you're putting up the wallpaper? Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I wish. That would, that would still be up if it was that. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, your favorite meal to cook for your kids. Uh, it depends on which kid. Um, my daughter, Savannah, loves a chicken and wild rice soup that I make. Actually, she's in Germany, and I sent her the link. So I don't know if she's watching or not, um, but I sent her the link a minute ago. Um, and, uh, yeah, my daughter's story, however, likes um, chicken fettuccine, Alfredo. 
Um, my son JW loves when I make um, enchiladas, homemade enchiladas. Mm. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. Wendy likes when I make um, chicken medallions. So I'm not sure. Gavin is just Gavin. My oldest son, he's he's he likes everything. He'll he, he's like Mikey. He'll eat, eat anything. So. <laughs> That's how my oldest son is. He comes home. He's like it's home cooked food. It's not army food. <laughs> I yeah, mean exactly. <laughs> uh, your favorite vacation spot to take the family um to take the family georgetown south carolina we go there quite a bit uh, we have some friends down there that are, are basically family to us um we stay in their house right on the intercoastal waterway they take us out in the 30-foot parker um and we actually go up and down the intercoastal and look at i mean we, we we stir up alligators i mean it's it's pretty cool the dukes uh i don't know if you guys have it i don't think you'll have it out west but dukes mayonnaise is a great mayo company they're based out of uh, the south here and um the duke's mayonnaise family actually used to have a house a plantation right there on the intercoast waterway and years ago the lady who was married to the ceo of duke's um the owner of duke's uh he sh she wanted to get him something interesting for a birthday present and she didn't know what to get him and she heard that camels were a nice gift so she bought him two camels and she didn't realize how long camels lived. He <laughs> since, he's since passed away and she has moved on and sold the plantation and the camels were, were they had to, they moved them right before she sold the plantation. They're still alive. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so when you're playing shows, do you prefer to play big festivals or like the smaller club shows? Uh, you know what? Uh, that answer is, is it, it's, I like, I love playing when people are there to have a good time. We can play a room with a hundred people in it. And if those people are, are getting rowdy with us, then that's going to be one of the best shows we've ever played all year. Um, I've played with uh, Brooks Nunn, Alan Jackson. Um, we toured with them for a while, did 20,000 seat uh, amphitheaters. Um, I used to get, it was so cool. They gave me tickets to give to pass out to people like hot girls or whatever. And, and I would go take those tickets they gave me to the front rows, the first couple rows. And I would actually go to the back after we got done with our set. Um, I would go to the back of the uh, amphitheater and find a family that was having a good time, a mom, dad, kids. And I would watch them enjoying themselves so much right there on the lawn at the back. I mean, the far, far back. And I would, I had a hood on, a sweatshirt. I remember in Arizona uh, was one of the coolest places. I walked up and there was a family of five and I had five tickets. And I said, hey guys, I said, um, I, I had my hood on and they didn't want to get bombarded in the crowd. But I, uh, I said, hey, you guys having a good time? Yeah, yeah. I said, y'all want to go down and sit in the front row? And they're like, what? And the mom got mad at me. She thought I was like trying to scam them or something. <laughs> I, I said, look, I'm not asking you to buy them. I'm, I'm not asking you for a dime. I said, I just got done singing. I'm Jason Michael Carroll. And she, and she freaked out then. And, right. I, and, and, and I said, here, these are for y'all. And they literally went front row and got to sit front row and watch Brooks and Alan Jackson that night. Uh, right after we got done, it was so, so cool to be able to do that every night. That was one of my favorite things to do. So honestly, back to your question. I know I kind of chased that squirrel. Um, I, uh, it, yeah, <laughs> dude, I'm bad. <laughs> it's, it's bad. I, I need medication, <laughs> but, uh, um, no, nah, anywhere that the crowd is there to have a good time and they're giving it back to us, that's going to be the place I want to play. Very cool. Yep. All right, last question. Your biggest parenting accomplishment? Biggest parenting accomplishment. Hmm. You know, um, I don't know, man. I can get sappy on this one. I think it's uh, it's the fact that I can call all of my kids right now and tell them I love them. And if my son or my daughters are around their friends or wherever they're at, um, they'll tell me they love me back. That's awesome. Dig it. All right. I'd like to add a couple questions. I always do. <clears throat> all right. <laughs> Jason Michael Carroll, you can play a show with any artist living or dead that you have not already played with. Who's it going to be? Oh, shoot. Um. I'm a huge Aerosmith fan, um, and uh, so I definitely would love to perform with Steven Tyler. I met Steven one time at the ACMs. Uh, we were um, walking through the underbelly of the MGM Grand going to uh, do the whole pomp and circumstance of getting in a, a limo by the dumpsters of the MGM Grand, okay. driving a block and a half to get let out of this of said limo and walk the red carpet, you know? <laughs> so, and uh, and uh, I got to meet Steven Tyler when he was coming back from a sound check with, with uh, Carrie Underwood, and we... 
I passed him in the hallway and I was scared to talk to him because, you know, they say don't meet your heroes because you're going to be, you know, yeah. I'm out of a lot of my show. I have microphone, I have scars hanging from my microphone stand because of Steven. Um, and so uh, they say don't meet him. And, and I was afraid to. And when he passed me in the hallway, I didn't say anything and kept walking. And I remember thinking that's the sinking feeling in my chest, like, oh, my God, if I don't say something, I'm going I'm, to I'll never get this moment back. Right. So I said, Steven, and he turned around and came back to me. And we stood there talking, and the whole time his agents over his shoulder, like, ah, Stephen, we gotta get Stephen. Stephen gotta get <laughs> and uh, and Stephen was like sitting there talking to me, and then he goes, Hey, you want to take a picture? And my buddy's hands were shaking so bad, I have a blurry picture of me and Stephen Tyler. Oh, um, and and uh, he threw the scarf he had on around my neck, and then we took a picture, and and he's like, Have a great day, and he starts walking off. And he's, Oh, Jason, I went, Yeah. He goes, Can I get that scarf back? And it broke my heart a little bit, but he was like. I got it. Carrie gave it to me during sound check and, and I went, yeah. Ah, <laughs> that right there is a fantastic story, man. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> I was like, here, you have it. <laughs> wow, man. <Yeah. laughs> Oof. I, I had another question come up in my head during that story and I freaking lost it. <laughs> oh, oh, I remember. It was a comment, not a question. Um, same exact scenario happened to me less than two weeks ago. Uh, oh. A picture with a it's right up your alley too. So we had a podcast episode with Joe Nichols, not too terribly okay. long ago. And um, after we got off, uh, I did a little research and it turns out he was playing a show like the next, like five days later in the Florida Keys. Well, it just turned out that me and my lady, were going to be in the Florida Keys that week. So we made phone calls and Joe was kind enough to allow us to sit literally front row at his show, a private show. Um, in Duck Key, which is, you know, part of the keys. Anyway, yeah. blah, 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 blah. It was uh, after the show. He's like, JP, lady, come on, come on, come here, come here, come here, come here. You know, we, we ch chatted up a little bit. He's like, let's get a picture real quick. And whoever took the picture, just, first of all, worst angle ever. There's no lighting. The flash, it, it, it was it was just such a garbage picture. And I was really bummed. You know, it's like I, I like having those 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 moments, those pictures to prove it, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> but most importantly, man, the memory and the experience were, is were there. You were you backlit too? Oh man, it was just <laughs> it, 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 I think you know the camera adds seven pounds. In this case, I it was like seventy-five pounds or something. I don't know, but it was it was not the most flat of all of us. I mean, even the the beautiful Joe Nichols. Uh, I, I, I shoot him the picture, and he's like, "What the f no? Let's not post that one." I said, "Don't you worry about it, man. That's not going to happen." <laughs> All right. Have you ever brought your kids on stage with you at any point in time in your career? I have several times. JW, there's actually pictures, uh, videos. Um, I have videos in my iTunes that I, I, I've converted to movie uh, files. That um, J Dub, when he was little, uh, when we were opening for Brooklyn and Alan Jackson, we actually went to. Uh, uh, opened at um, um, an amphitheater in Pittsburgh and it was just a, that show Brooks and Dunn couldn't make it for some reason so literally we were direct support for Alan Jackson and we instead of doing a 30 minute set they bumped us up to a 45 minute set and J-Dub came out he, had, he used to love to be at soundcheck with us and my and this is a little bit just to give you some backstory my in-laws are huge Steelers fans so uh, when J-Dub was born he was born in October 24th. He was very first Halloween, like four days, six days after he was born. Um, he uh, he went as Troy Palomalu. We had a, a Steelers onesie on him, yeah. put a wig on his little bald head, and put some eye black on his face. <laughs> and and so uh, fast forward, they he had a, a, a Steelers jersey that, uh, that had Carol on the back, and he had a Fisher Price guitar that I took some. Um, some riggers line uh, uh from the guys setting up the the, the show right. and made a guitar strap with it and so he would walk around on on playing his little fish price guitar during our sound check and uh, that night awesome. with twenty thousand people uh he came up on stage and played with in his Steelers jersey and i think he was a bigger hit than alan or myself yeah <laughs> that's usually the case man that's yeah that's stuff. That's awesome. are you are you a Steeler fan as well then no I, i'm from houston texas so i'm a, i'm a uh that's my hometown that's where i was born uh so i grew up a texans uh a oilers fan the oilers right. moved to nashville i became a titans fan when i was yeah. in the marine corps i got my panthers uh before you live in north carolina then so i became a panthers fan and then my houston texans are back in texas so i'm a texans fan wow yeah right. well, i'm just gonna mm -hmm. go ahead and just 
Put that yeah. box in there. <laughs> Hey, I saw what finger you were holding that with too. I, yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is Jason Michael Carroll, country superstar, U.S. veteran, dad, and from what I've gathered, a pretty freaking incredibly awesome guy who I would not mind sharing a drink with or yeah, some chicken wings. Hot wings and drinks, buddy. Or I, I don't know if you still time, drink. Right? Huh? Do, do you do you throw back a beer here and there? I oh yeah, I, I just uh, I took seven days off last week. I believe it or not, I I didn't have a drink for seven days. I got to thinking about it. Twenty three years of playing music, I have had a at least two drinks a day for about twenty three years. So I took seven days off, and I just to, just to prove I could do it. Right. Um, didn't have anything, just water and tea. And uh, and then a Sunday this past week, I went to a memorial service for a buddy of mine, eighty three years old. His name was Harry. Um, Harry was in the Air Force. Harry was a great guy from up in. He's one of those Yankees that moved down to North Carolina. We can. It became a damn Yankee because he stayed. And uh, <laughs> and Harry's a great guy, man. Um, but he passed away at 83, and uh, we went to a memorial service for him last week, and it just felt wrong. Now I wasn't gonna have a drink. I had a water when I got there, and then his daughters came up and said, "Hey, that cooler over there beside the table. We know you knew Dad." I was like, "Yeah." And they said um, that was uh, some beer that uh, his, that my brother, their grand, his grandson, bought him for uh, uh, Christmas, and it sat in his garage, and he never put it, he never got to drink it. So we brought him, so y'all can have one of dad, one of grandpa's beers. And so it felt wrong not to have one. So Sunday, I I, I broke my seven day streak. But yeah, nah, no, no problem. Yeah. That's that's yeah. fine. I'm going on a few months, to be perfectly honest. I, had a I, I, I don't drink that often, but when I do, I do it correct. Um, real quick, Amelia Bowman just said in the chat room, hey, Jason. Hi, Amelia. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. easy. There it is. All right. And there's been a whole bunch of chats that's oh, wow. been flying by earlier, and I just I, – I, uh, and I Jason is mom's favorite. I'm going to give Literally. a shout-out to my buddies at Quality Cars and Grants Pass. They're watching. Thanks, Are guys. they? Well, why don't they say something? I don't know. They should. I mean, you could you can literally call in on the Bullhorn app. Props right. the Bullhorn. You can call in. We can like literally interface you, and you can be part of this show. I on like the Bullhorn that. app. It's really cool. That you can pop questions in. There's a chat room. It's it's really cool. Uh, but we're gonna end it. <laughs> he is Jason. My oh oh Amelia has one more question or actually a comment. Tell Jason I want his Chewbacca that's beside him, LOL. Okay. <laughs> you, got, you got to get past me first, Amelia. I, I, you should see, I, you should see I, have, I have a full uh, Christian Bale Batman suit as well that uh, what? Is, not, is not on a mannequin right now, but it's the it's the latex and rubber. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. We just now, need to have a podcast just... studio with all of Jason's cool stuff, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're having a good episode of a podcast when you can't end it because more things keep coming up and the guest doesn't mind. I can tell. I oh no! I, I, I can tell. I, I, did you I, see the new Batman, days, bro? <laughs> Have you seen the new Batman yet? I did, and I'll be honest with you. It, I heard people. The reason I had to go see it was everybody was saying it was better than the original, the Christian Bale's. And I, I'll be honest with you, I liked the, how dark it's getting. You know, it seems yeah. like they're really taking Batman even yeah. darker and darker every time. The, every new generation of it, yeah. and this one, the Riddler was a great dark character. Yes, I and, will and, agree and, with you there. Who do you think was in the? Who do you think he was talking to at the end? Now I don't. I'm not gonna give a spoiler. Of course, it, come on. Okay, okay, I right. don't want to give out spoilers on an episode. But, but so. think, about, think about this: who's who's about to take over? And and now Gotham's flooded. It's pretty sick. Yeah, Dude, right. It's it all. But they the way they intertwine that makes sense. It's yes. so. I'm excited to see what's gonna happen with it. And I was a little nervous about Edward. You know, Edward being Batman. Right. He, he <laughs> the turning into a dark dark. My Batman. issue. My issue was, oh, don't you get all glittery vampire on us, Nick. You <laughs> leave him alone. He was yeah, in I, Harry Potter first. I have, a teenage, okay? I have a teenage daughter, dude. I had to watch all of the <laughs> Did you see? Did you see the meme, though? Did you see the meme that said uh, um, Edward was a vampire that turned into a bat? So I guess it's true. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> my, my issue with the – and I would even say issue. Um, it, it was a little long. You know, and, and I took my son and I knew going in that, you know, it's got a PG-13 rating It's and it's a little dark, um, but I didn't realize going in uh, how much of a thinker 
that this movie was. You know, this isn't a Christian Bale. This isn't a Michael Keaton Batman where you can go in, be entertained for two hours, you know, edge of your seat action, and then walk out. Ah, that was fun. This, I walked out going, oh, I had to think. And my <laughs> son, who's 11, you know, he's like, Dad, what what happened here? Explain this. Why is that? And so there's a bunch of questions going on. And, you know, if I had known going in that, and I and if I had looked it up, I probably would have, but I don't like doing that. I, I, um, I would have had a better idea of what I was getting myself into. Um, so I'm probably going to go check it out again and I see. Think, I think the coolest part for me, my 14-year-old wouldn't saw it without me. And he comes back. He's like, Dad, have you heard of Nirvana? <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did, did you notice how they intertwined the entire movie with that song? Yes. Uh, he was so stoked on that. I'm like, that is, yeah. I, I, to, I totally appreciate that. Then did I'm you, like, did you know did that the you, drummer you is the singer for Foo Fighters? He's like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you get the secret ending? I, I haven't seen it yet. I, it was it after the credits? It's, it's at the end of the credits. I didn't it, stay. I didn't stay. There's a QR code that pops up. Okay. And it's not a secret ending like Marvel does. This one actually gets you involved in the in the Riddler's hieroglyphs. So you uh, actually scan it with your phone. It does. There's no ending. It, there's a QR code that pops up in the bottom of the screen. Right. You scan your phone, and it takes you to a website with the, the Riddler's hieroglyphs, and you have to uh, look it up, and it tells you a, a secret about the ending. Uh, it's, it's, dude, it's, it's, so it gets you involved in the story it's pretty yeah. sick yeah that's it's, you know maybe maybe we'll go see it again without the kid and i'll do it earlier yeah. in the day where i'm a little more co- conscious maybe i'll go with you Shit. I, okay. I, I still need to see it. Hey, i'll come out there and go with you dude let's go let's do it. I, and, I, and i have a sneaky suspicion <clears throat> wink wink nudge nudge that we will be seeing jason michael carroll in person in the coming months yes I am, yeah, I am, you, I'm working on it now. I'm going to leave that there. Yeah. We're working on some acoustic stuff out there, working on full band stuff. I mean, there's lots of things. Every year I do an acoustic tour out there. That's how we actually got uh, familiar with that area. Yeah. And um, we go we go all the way from Bend uh, up to uh, Seattle, to over to Spokane, over to uh, um, uh, Idaho. And um, I, we've, been, we've been to Montana. So, I mean, and, and, I, and I do all of it in a rental car when I'm doing the acoustic run. So it's, it's pretty right. cool. So definitely follow me on my socials, guys. And you'll and when we go, I'm going to let you guys know when we're coming to town and come see us. It'd be awesome. Absolutely. And also, once again, check out SaveHomeFront.org. That's at SaveHomeFront.org. Look at that perfect timing. My light just burnt out. Uh, lots of cool things coming up with them and the nonprofit and veterans jason michael carroll thank you so much for taking time out of your day and joining us live here on the bullhorn app on dadcast to everyone listening and watching worldwide after this is aired thank you so much for your support if you're checking this out on youtube go us give us a subscribe a comment a like all that good stuff and we will see all of you next week and next time live on bullhorn thank you and see ya thank you guys I don't want to go. <laughs> but I, as soon as I finish live, we all go. This ain't like Zoom where we can chit chat afterwards, but I'm going right. to finish this up. Jason Michael Carroll, thanks, man. We'll be in thanks touch so much, and man. we'll talk soon. And uh, again, thanks. Thank you, guys. Y'all have a good one. See you. Bye.